Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. I'm your host, Terrell Simmons. And on this special episode of Consult with Shola, we have not only Shola in the building, we have Dr. Craig rejoining us. Y'all remember Dr. Craig, season one, uh, where we talked about numerology. So I'm a we we're gonna talk to him about numerology, what is it, and all and all that good stuff. And then Show's gonna get her reading live. Show, are you ready for this? Are you nervous? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Doctor Craig makes it uh, easy and 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 hopeful. I I I, I want to say pain free. It was just a, a a a delight to have mine done. I, he he shocked me in so many different ways. But Doctor Craig, welcome back. How are you, fine sir? Doing just fine, thank you. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, no problem. So now for people who are not familiar with numerology, could you give us a brief overview? What is new numerology and how does it work? Okay, numerology is basically the study of, of numbers. Um, mm. Ology means the study of, we have psychology, geology. So numerology is the study of numbers. So some people may ask, well, why should we study numbers? It's because numbers are different from figures. When we mm -hmm. count, we add things, we check our paycheck or our address, those are figures. If I say I have one pen, that's a figure. It's a quantity. But if I look mm -hmm. a little closer and I say, big pens are number one, I'm no mm -hmm. longer talking about a quantity, but a quality of being the first, the best, mm -hmm. the top. So everybody knows what numero uno means, Terrell, but yeah. every number has a meaning in it reveals a spiritual quality. Ooh. So that's numerology in a nutshell. It's been around some 5,000 years. Numerology predates all the world's great religions. Mm -hmm. There's evidence in numerology in the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Torah, the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's been around a while. And as we've entered this new age of enlightenment and spirituality, it's coming back. You know, people are becoming self-empowered. Numerology Man. was one of those tools back in the day people used to empower themselves. Um, but we went through a, a phase in history called the Dark Ages, where all <laughs> knowledge, wisdom was just was just crushed, um, translated. Uh, different kings were fighting over it. And it kind of it kind of got lost. If you were a practitioner back in those times, um, things didn't work out too good for you. So mm. people who had talent, skills, and abilities like to be um, like like your other guest, Sola, um, she's a number eleven. She has a talent, skill, and ability. Elevens know things are going to happen before they do. Um, so back in the day, <laughs> people who had those skills, they would be you know ostracized or ran out of town or at worst burnt at the burnt at the stake because these were special talents and abilities so they were suppressed you know you told right. your little your sons and daughters no no don't don't say that don't do that um but now it's coming back you, you can't hold the truth back and um I, I i just had to use her as an example of what i was talking about because she is the light nice and, 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 and then we'll, we'll we'll break down those numbers uh, of her her full name which is adesola which is a d e s o l a and then and you'll 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 do your magic on how you derived on that but something that we had talked about last time on the episode i remember you talking about life path numbers and and how that relates to numerology what's the, what is the significance of you know my life path number Mm. Great question. Great question. Once we have this information about numbers and their meaning, their what, what they can communicate to us, um, uh, Psalms 90, verse 12, there's an example I like to use. And Moses was a numerologist. Um, mm. He wrote the fourth book of the Torah and the Bible, and it's called Numbers. <laughs> and in mm. Psalms 12, uh, he says, teach us to number our days so we can apply our hearts to wisdom. That's a direct referral to numerology. The birth mm. path number, the, the number that you're referring to, comes from the sum of one's month, day, and year. 
add it together. Mm-hmm. And that's called the birth path number. It's called the career number. And through my 35 or 40 years of study, I've come to realize the birth path number represents God's part of the contract. I don't care if you call it God, Allah, Buddha, the force, um, but the universal intelligence has a contract with each of us. Mm-hmm. If the universal intelligence is a big flame, we're a spark from that flame. We have all the abilities, all the characteristics on a lower level, but we've come here with those talent, skills, and abilities, and it's revealed by the numbers and our birthday. Who knew we come with an owner's man, Lay. Terrell? <laughs> Lay, I know, right? Now, now, sometimes people confuse the life path number with the destiny number. What is the significance of my destiny number? Uh, great, great uh, uh, question, because that represents our part of the contract mm-hmm. and is revealed by the letters in our name. Mm, okay, love so, it, love um, it. So the word, before we jump it to Shola's whole, because I know she's chomping at the bits now, she, and everybody's probably on the edge of their seats, <laughs> and, and, and I, I'm, I'm going to reveal all this in just a minute. Um, but to, a couple more questions before we jump into it. One, how accurate is numer- numerology, and what is the relationship between numerology and astrology? Because a lot of people look at both of those. Mm. Well, um, as they say, both roads lead to Joe's. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I'm not a professional <laughs> astrologist, but the idea is we are energy vibrating. If I had a magnifying device large enough and you looked at me through it, it would it would we'd be terrified because we're actually vibrations, atoms, neutrons, protons. It looks like we're solid, but we're not. And uh, with mm-hmm. numerology, this energy, this vibratory pattern can be defined or symbolized by the letters in your name and the numbers in your birthday. Um, if I take it back to how it was taught um, back in the Egyptian mystery schools, the word created us. We are a living word. Mm-hmm. And words are symbolized with letters and numbers. Starts in grade school, teacher says, ah. Oh, that's the A sound, boys and girls. But but that's the B sound. So they give us a vibration and the symbol for it. So our particular energy vibratory pattern is symbolized by letters and numbers in that manner. Now with astrology, they look at the heavenly bodies because mm-hmm. they too are vibrating and radiating and sending out energy. Mm-hmm. And they want to know where those bodies are because when the spirit enters the earthly plane and is takes on the, the, the physical vessel, that spirit is influenced by the vibrations of the planets. Give an example. Mm. When I was in seventh grade, I never forget it. My science teacher had a tuning fork. She said, right, right, come here. Put a tuning fork in front of my face. I didn't know he had one behind him, which he struck. And when he brought the second tuning fork around next to the other one, it started to vibrate at the same rate. Mm-hmm. And and that's how the spirit is influenced when it enters the earthly plane by the vibrations mm-hmm. of the planet. So astrologers, they want to know what time, what date, so they know where those planets are because they know the influence those planets have. Um, mm-hmm. I've done shows with astrologers. They use their method. I use mine. But we both were able to give um, the caller or the client uh, good advice. Different perspective, mm-hmm. but yeah. good advice. All right, so this is where I let you and Ade Shola, a.k.a. Shola, and Dr. Craig do the magic. Dr. Craig, go and lead Shola through her reading. And, and, and Shola, feel free to ask any questions as he's going through it. Let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Um, I, I also want to let people know I'm not a mystic. I'm not a psychic. Um, I am a student of a science that's been taught for some 5,000 years. So the information I'm going to be sharing with you is coming from the giants whose shoulders that I'm standing on. Um, people like Lloyd Strayhorn in New York, people like Faith Gervain and Dusty Bunker, and, of course, the nameless uh, teachers in the Egyptian mystery schools. Mm. Um, so let me start with your birthday. What is your month, day, and year of birth? 
Okay, so it's June 15 and 1980. June 6, June 16? 15, 15, 1 5. Mm hmm. 1982. Okay, I'd like to start with the day of birth. Oh, and day yours of birth. Is just a oh I'm sorry, 15. <laughs> Oh, One yes, five. yes. Um, I did. You gave me the information I wanted, but as an introductory to your reading, I'm oh, going to right. start by focusing on the number 15. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. 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 Sure. The number one stands for leadership. The number five stands for freedom. So <laughs> like another famous 15, you are here to fight for freedom and to be a service to others, to stand up for the little guy. Okay. <laughs> um, That's now, my Terrell life. was really giving me some <laughs> some body language over there. I, I guess. That's I guess. Let me tell you. That's my life she, story. <laughs> that's her life story right there. She she know why I'm doing this because. <laughs> the, everything she does in business is to do exactly just that. Every small business that she has set up life. was to do this. My that. business, life, family, all of that. The numbers don't lie, you know. And the good thing about it is we start with the answers. So I had I had sent this sheet over. I don't know if you had a chance to to see it or take a look at it yet, but all the numbers that I'm sharing with you are there already. So I'm just telling you what I've learned that the numbers mean. When you add one plus five, you get six, okay? Now, as I mentioned before, numerology and evidence back 5,000 years. Um, the scripture, less than 2,000. But inside the scripture, the information about a guy who turned six vats of water into wine. Hmm. Now, this story took place at a wedding. So six is love, family get-togethers, holidays. Let's all get together and let's cook and let's have a feast. Okay, that's the number six. But the main thrust of the story was the rescue. So you're a rescuer. You're rescuing people, saving them, pulling them up out of the rut, throwing out your invisible rope, pulling them up. Give them a wag of that finger. That's the parent energy. Don't get too close to that edge now. I told you about that. And you send them on the way. The danger in being the rescuer is your rope's only 50 feet long. And someone is bound sooner or later to fall into a 100-foot hole. Mm -hmm. When you get to the edge of the hole and throw your rope out, it's going to fall short. And here's what I don't want you to do. Lean over the hole to make your rope longer. Can you get it? I want to help you. Can you reach it? And when they do, guess what? Oh, there you go in the hole with them. Mm -hmm. Now, that's they're not going to stop there. They're going to stand on your shoulder, jump on your head, get out the hole, and all you're going to hear is footprints in the distance, and they're not even going to say thank you. Okay. The six is mm. the number of the martyr. That mm. guy who turned six vats of water into wine was announcing, I'm here to give it. I'm here to give my all. Martin Luther King Jr. shared your birthday. Mm. Another martyr. So mm. I want you, easy for me to say, hard for you to do, to realize you can't save everybody. And you have to learn to let go and let God. Mm. When you stop trying to work with someone who's giving you a cramp in your stomach and other aches and pains, that's the feedback telling you this person is in too deep. And when you move out of that situation, you're not leaving them in a lurch because the universe hates a vacuum. As soon as you move out, someone with a 200 foot rope is going to come in there and go, wow, what you've been suffering so long for? Who's next? Mm. Because the universe wants you to move on to oh. someone that you can help the same way. Hmm. You're probably a good cook, by the way. Now, this six, <laughs> yeah. one plus five. I can test to that, yes. 
Dr. Crane, you oh, know, I, and, and, and oh, sure, I, I, have, sure. I have not told him anything. Hey, he's hitting points here. Woo! Go ahead. Let me stop. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. I get a lot of that. I get mm-hmm. a lot of that. You've been following me? Who you been talking to? <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's the numbers. And everything that I said is double because it came from adding one plus five to get six. And that's your month. Mm-hmm. June, the sixth month. Hmm. So not only is your month a number six, but your day, one plus five is a number six. And that indicates something very, very special in numerology, which is you are an old soul, a master spirit. You've been here many, many times before. And you've come here with a specific purpose. And that purpose is... It's going to be interpreted by others when you hear them telling you you're being mean, stubborn, and strict. Because your purpose is to establish order order out of chaos. To be to be that one everybody can count on. Okay? So you can't be you didn't come here to play. You came here to be serious. All right. Mm. Um, your energy represents when they plant a new tree in the ground, they put that spike in the ground to hold it in place. You seen that that two two spikes on the side holding that tree down? That's to make sure that tree survives. It cost them a little more, but they were losing three or four trees out of every ten until they put that in place. So that's you. You're the the energy that holds things in place to make mm-hmm. sure it gets a firm root set. And that's how you rescue. That's how you rescue. But you're not here to give people fish. You're here to teach them how to fish. Mm-hmm. That way you can move on and they're not draining you. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, I'm, that's your I'm, month I'm day. You know, by so, the way. So, Craig, <laughs> Dr. Craig, we was just having a conversation not too long ago, mm-hmm. ago and she was talking about like you know uh, in her entrepreneurial journey i'm i'm not meant to be the the operator i'm meant to set up and then move on to get them where they need to go and move on right we was just talking about this i don't know what's resonate with you right now shola as you hear all this stuff oh i'm i'm very happy to i i now understand why it took so long for us to have this meet because i have just gone through some um you know growth and healing processes over the last one year and it was coming to a lot of these conclusions um, about why I was I was exhausted, have this underlining unhappiness sometimes. And um, this, uh, like last week I came to this point where I shouldn't let people use, you know, the billionaire out of me in the sense where that's how I've been helping. I've been not just giving the rope, but as you said, end up falling to the hole and just hearing footsteps because that's, essentially what's happened because you know a lot of times in my life where I, I keep I tell my brother that hey you know I've helped so many people you know and there's just not and nowhere to be found um and I, I've put myself in a situation where I know I've done all this work and it just feels like you know I'm stuck in some of the the traumatic spaces that some of these people I helped have been and um, just quite even quite recently, actually, you know, we went through an experience together, myself and, and Terrell. And for the first time, I let I let go. And you know, I'm so grateful I I had the support system to remind me of something I promised myself last year not to do. And when that opportunity came, for the first time, I released. So now I appreciate what you're saying because. It took me a while, you know, almost 40 years on this planet. And then I finally realized that I have to let go. In fact, when I don't let go in time, I've noticed something. Things just start to happen in the relationship. And this is, it depends on who I'm mentoring or who I'm helping that are not healthy. And I start to feel unhappy. So I'm already there longer than I should be. So I got to a point where I realized that, okay, I have to see what's the maximum time that I give the most uh, value. It's usually between three and six months, maximum six months. Actually, you know, people, some people, the people who are like, who appreciate what I'm doing and can see the value within three months, they don't need me anymore. But six months is, is, that's the cutoff time. 
And beyond that, things just start to happen that forced me to leave. And I think that's kind of like something that was protecting me after I didn't learn in time that, hey, you're only supposed to be here for a short time and leave. And it got I've gone to a point now where I let people know if I'm going to help them that, hey, we're only going to do this for six months and I'm gone. You know, you're going to have to figure it out. I had to, you need to fly on your own. So don't think I'm going to be here, you know, um, supporting you in this way forever. It's just not going to happen. Um, and I've gone to a point in my life too where I need to be able to do some of these things for myself, you know, um, and that's where I was feeling a little bit of guilt thinking, have I done enough until I did an inventory of what, of everything, of my achievements. And I had to accept my own level, my own measure of success. It's not what society's is. My measure of success is not of this earth. It's very different. If I, I can look back and literally say every year I was conscious of my life, I at least helped 10 to 20 people. Um, and that to me is how is my measure. That's I find myself, I say I'm successful doing that. And I can look back and I can look at, you know, people who in being around me, in me being involved in whatever they were doing, they have moved ahead in life. And that, that makes me very happy. So knowing I've always felt that I was on mission ever since I was a child, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> you know, I never understood it. Um, but, you know, every time I heal or have some kind of awakening, it's more and more of it is revealed. And then the right people come into my life that I have to execute something with, you know, and um, I'm getting to the point where I have told her that my retirement is to teach. That's what I'm going to be doing. So it's very nice that you're saying a lot of these things because it, it, I'm quiet because my soul just feels at peace here in it. So I'm really, really grateful. But we're not done um, yet. We're not done yet. I know, that, I know we're not done yet, but to just start <laughs> like this. You know, I was a bit apprehensive in terms of nervous. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, but how you started makes sense. The 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 freedom, that is the most important thing to me. Um, in everything, in my relationships, in how I work, um, and anything that in any ways like, you know, goes after that or tries to stifle it, I'm just I have to walk away because it just it's, well, it's not you re you will recall that number of freedom was the number Five. Five, yes. And I brought that up when I talked about your date of birth, the 15th. But let's see where that five shows up again. Mm. We're going to add you a month and day. Six and 15 is 21. In your year, 1982. 82. 82. That adds up to 20. One plus nine, eight plus two. Ten and ten. I'm going to come back to that 20, but for now, I'm adding that 20 to 21. And this is the number that Terrell spoke of, the birth path number, the sum of your month, your day, and your year. 6 plus 15 plus 20 equals 41, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So, yes, freedom hmm. is the most important thing for you. That's your gift. You didn't come here to work 9 to 5. You came here to be a very powerful change agent, an mm. agent for change, which means people are going to label you a troublemaker and a boat rocker. Uh-oh, here she comes again. What's she doing now? So if you're not hearing that, you are not on your job. Mm. Okay? Mm. Mm. <laughs> change, change. Um, getting back to what you had said earlier, <clears throat> What I was hearing was the need to form a package, a structure, two-month program, three-month program, six-month program. I'm going to leave that to you so you have an array of offerings for people at various points of their development. But at each stage, they understand you're not going to be draining me. You know, this isn't uh, an addiction. It's a program. Now, back to your year, the number 20. <clears throat> Two stands for peace. Mm. And zero is a symbol for the creator. So in the scripture, blessed are the peacemakers because they are called the children of God. That's the number 20. That's your year. That's your year. So you have 
a direct connection with higher forces, infinite intelligence, God, Allah, however you express it, the force is with you. <laughs> I love that. Um, when the zero shows up. Um, the 20 will also give you musical abilities. So you're also an artist. Um, you're multi-talented and should not try to just do one thing. Um, but once you get past three, it's, it's too much. Yeah. But one or two is not going to be enough. You, you're versatile. Okay. Um, travel, entertainment, um, all those things come under the number five the public worldly life. So if you're not yet, <clears throat> you're going to be up on stage lecturing and talking to people. So I'm just going to ask you, have you written your book yet? Yes, I have. I've written one that I have published, written two, a second one recently that was published this year. I worked on the third, which is more of a picture book. Um, so yes, and i uh, <laughs> writing my, my fourth now at the moment <laughs> called Maverick. So um, it's funny that you said I'm a trailblazer that people call me like a, I'm, I'm usually a maverick. That's what I am. So, you know, um, and <laughs> I don't know any other way to be <laughs> really. So I think I, 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 and I usually used to get scared because like, like I, I my, in my late twenties and thirties, because I felt I wasn't understood. Um, but I, I did not try to temper myself down in work. I did so in my personal life, but I didn't do that in work. So I, that's something I would like to understand more because now my personal life seems to be more important to me the more I wind down with work. And it's funny, this world, teaching on the world stage, Terrell knows that that's my dream, my next phase in life. I said, hey, I want a guest lecture around the world. This is what I want to do now. I've got this amount of experience I need to teach. Like that's what's something is just pulling me, you know, towards that direction so much that everything I'm doing now is to to make sure that that happens in the next uh, year. Definitely, def I definitely see that coming up. Um, utilizing your gifts, talents, skills, and abilities. The only challenge that you have will be to follow through. Now. Oftentimes, when someone is multi-talented and can pursue a lot of things at the same time, this challenge will show up, okay? Uh, you'll start and stop and start and stop and start and stop. Um, and one of the things that you stop could have led you to where you really want to be. So learning how to delegate, okay? Um, <laughs> Learning how to delegate. <laughs> this is why you're teaching me right now. I feel like yeah, the universe is I really just, using I just this. Told, right Dr. Craig, I just told her this. Like, this I, year. I told her this multiple times. Yeah. Look, I know you can do it, but I need you to delegate that out. I don't need your energy focused on that. <laughs> yeah, he's teaching me how to do that. Yeah. I love that. A bit late. <laughs> A bit late. Hmm. That's where yes. the teaching comes in, the uplifting, the teaching, the inspiring. Mm. Um, it's really a transfer of energy mm. that you are able to um, accomplish mm. when you're really delegating the right way. You'll know who to hand the ball off to, who not to. Um, <laughs> but let's get to your name. So far, we've been talking about gifts, talents, skills, and abilities, things that the creator gave to you, okay? Um, the name reveals how you're choosing to use those gifts. So I'm going to start with S-O-L-A, if I may. That's the well, do original you want to use her, her full name? You want to do her full name? Yes. Her birth name? Okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's Adisola. <laughs> Adishola, actually. <laughs> And how do you spell, spell that? It, spell it. Spell it for him. A for apple, D for dog, E for elephant, S for sugar, O for orange, L for love, A for apple. Okay. So now I have your birth name, and I'm going to also look at Sola. S O L A. That's how you were first introduced to me. That's how you were presenting yourself. Well, to the yeah. public. Okay. So 
That's a number 11. There are double digits called master numbers. And the number 11 is called the master teacher vibration and the master of revelation. Hmm. That's the number 11. That is the number that enables you to go into a meditative state mm. and not be asking the universe, give me this, give me this, give me that. But to be saying, thy will not, my will be done. What will you have me do? It's like a channel. It's like you're an antenna. You know? mm. And the mm. energy will pass through you. Mm. And that's what I meant about the transference mm. of, of energy when you delegate, mm. okay, mm. when you delegate. Um, so that's the name you're operating under as solar. Um, that'll give you automatic writing experiences and let you know if things are going to happen before they do. Mm. <laughs> All right. So you may have tons of stuff that you have on scraps of paper yes. or, or, to be, or a little book somewhere where when the energy oh, hits God. you, you've got my to get it paper and notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. So, <laughs> yeah. This if is you gather, if you start to gather those little pieces together, what you're receiving is truth, mm. wisdom, and light. That you may you have a contract to disseminate, mm. and let the blind see. Mm. 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 Yeah, that's powerful. Um, yeah, that is. So now we know that's the eleven. So we just have to, we just have to add A D E to that. A D E. So where did the numbers come from? Well, A is a one. D is a fourth letter of the alphabet. That's a four. E is a fifth letter. So it's a five. It's based on where it falls in the alphabet. Okay. Um, S is a one. It's the 19th letter. One and nine is 10. One plus zero is one. O is the 15th. That's your day of birth. The O. That's a six. L is a three. It's the 12th letter. Um, and that's the number associated with well, you will experience it as there'll be times everyone thinks you're wrong, but you'll be the only one that's right. Mm. That's how you experience when you're a genius. Okay, <laughs> I didn't want to call you a genius at first because unto whom much is given, much is expected. <laughs> that's how you experience it. Everybody mm. thinks you're crazy, you're wrong, and you're the only one that's right. So that's so it sounds better than it is when you're living through the experience of being yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. So if we add that ADE to the 11, it adds up to 21. Uh, two plus one is three. So that's the number associated with singing, painting, dancing. It's the number of the entertainer. Um, and it also lets me know your picture book is going to be well received by children. Mm. Um, you have an amazing effect on young people. If you go somewhere, like visit a friend or relatives, and young people around, they will be drawn to you like a magnet. Yeah. Mm. Like <laughs> you might be saying, "What are these kids like laying on a dark suit? What's happening?" <laughs> yeah, that's that's the number of youth. The number three stands for youth. Expressing mm. youth and abundance. Mm. Um, the most famous 21 in my studies has been um, Gandhi, the Mahatma, the great soul who took on the British Empire with a cane and a prayer. Mm. So you got Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday and your first name is Mahatma Gandhi's energy. Mm. So mm. <laughs> you came here to really um, accomplish Clean some house. things <laughs> using the power of love and harmony and peace. That's the universal energy that binds us all. Mm. Mm. So you're a powerful change agent, mm. but you know the pen is mightier than the sword. The sword. 
So mm-hmm. it will be your books, your writings, your your speeches, that information that you've got on the scraps of paper that you're receiving, that's going to thrust you where a lot of 11s don't want to go into the limelight mm-hmm. on stage in front of people. Mm-hmm. So I love it. Cosmic consciousness. Cosmic mm-hmm. consciousness. Mm-hmm. Six, twelve. Your vowel total is a number 13, A-E-O-A, A-E-O-A, that's 1561. And the number 13, I want to talk about that. People are afraid of the number 13. I know people who won't go out of the house on Friday the 13th. The 13th <laughs> is a symbol for change, release, and transformation. Mm. Change, release, and transformation. Okay. So when people encounter you, they are never the same. Mm. You take the old and make it new. new. Wow. Now, this can also translate not only into the lives of people that you're here to rescue and teach and serve and heal, but also investing in real estate, renovating old properties. Mm. Taking the old and making it new. <laughs> This is this is just uh, I, ah, speechless. <laughs> she she been wanting to get into real estate too, and we've been talking about that, uh, and, and from renovating to even building from scratch, right? Like taking lots and then the land, yeah, the land. Mm. The word L A N D is in number thirteen, mm. and that's that's how I'm making this reference. You see, once you know the number code and you start to look at different num- different words and it relates to your name, you know you're on the path. Teach us to number our days so we can apply our hearts to wisdom. The numbers reveal the hidden energy un- underneath everything that can be represented by numbers, the energy in your house. Okay, those numbers on your house tell you whether or not you're in the right house or not. Um the energy on your uh, social security number, your phone number, all of the symbol are symbols. I, I need, the, energy I, I need to unpack that real quick. I need to unpack that. Shola, give them the numbers of the the what numbers you need. Just the first like five or four, like or the which numbers uh, of the house. Well, the the just the numbers of the address, not the name, just the numbers oh. of the address. The numbers, okay, two zero oh, six seven. Three zero one. Hmm. That's that on your address? address. Yeah, that's there's the building, then there's the you know unit. <laughs> so, do you need the unit number or the or the address what unit, number? What's your unit number? Oh, three zero one. <laughs> okay, okay. So the address is two zero six seven. Yeah. And your unit is three zero one. Yes. Okay, we were just talking about the number 13. When I mentioned the land, um, your vow total was 13, change, release, transformation. Um, I talked about you being that number, holding things in place. That's the number four. So that's the unit 301. <laughs> so the 13 is there and the zero is symbolic. Mm. The force is with you. <laughs> it's symbolic of, of have a connection with God. Wow. Um, your unit has up to 15, 20, 67. Two plus zero plus six plus seven is 15. So that's your that's your space. Mm. That's your space. You're going to be comfortable there, working there <clears throat> as a base for your operation. Hmm. Mm. Uh, and that's the benefit of numerology. I have a lot of uh, my clients who are into real estate business owners before they buy a property. Well, I'm looking at this one and this one. Which one do you think? You know, um, so it's it's another use for mm. numerology. I heard you mention it took you a while to know you had to let go, learn to let go, and it's something I told you within the first 30 seconds of sharing with you about the number six. 
So this information helps us with our self-concept. Mm-hmm. A lot of times who we think we are is who people have told us we are yeah. <laughs> or mm-hmm. how they want us to be. Uh, okay. So another use that I have uh, with numerology, and I'm, I'm bringing this up because you're a counselor, you're a nurturer and a healer. And uh, it may be a tool that you may find useful as well. Hmm. Okay, what's your middle name? <laughs> I have two. Ah. Which one? <laughs> Let's start with the first one. Okay, it's um, Ibukun Olu. So that's I for indigo, B for ball, U for umbrella, K for king, U for umbrella, N for nice, O for orange, L for love, U for umbrella. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a lot of master number patterns in your middle name. One of them is the number 55 is showing up. Mm-hmm. And it's called 5 and 5 is 10. 1 plus 0 is 1. So it's a leadership vibration, but it's divinely inspired. And it will make you just as powerful in law as religion. In mm-hmm. early times, the lawyers were the holy, the holy men were the, were the judges. Those were the people people trusted. They, so they were the judges. Now we have people talk about separation of church and state and it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. insanity. Um, mm-hmm. But there's an indication with your name of being a judge um, and a leader, someone who judges from spiritual values through divine knowing. Mm. It's like you're able to look, go to a situation and discern not your will, yeah, but how things. Hmm. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. Yes. To other people, is just going to blow their mind if I say it. But you know where I'm coming from. It's yeah. that connection. Hmm. It's that connection. So let's add it all up. Um, two. Uh, that kind of jumped out at me. Three, five, seven, ten, fifteen, twenty-one, and six. Is 27. Now that's God's favorite number, the number 27. That comes from the story of Job. Remember, numbers preceded the holy writings, so the people who were doing the writings were hiding information in the names. Yes. So yeah. if you apply the understanding, the, the tool, the knowledge, the science to the names, it opens everything up. And Job was a 27. J is a 10th letter. O is a 15th. There's that number again. And B is a second of the alphabet. 10, 15, and 2 is 27 all day long. And that's the name you, I just, you just shared with me. What does that imply? Job had a lot. And then lost yeah. it all. Now, I don't know where you are on that roller coaster ride. <laughs> Hopefully it's behind you. Behind me, finally. <laughs> yes, I mean, like... It's, I always it's, hope that when I share that with people, uh, they say, what? What's coming? <laughs> <Uh-oh>. it, <laughs> yes, I, I mean, that's what brought me to the U.S., actually. You know, mm-hmm. I lost everything, essentially. Well, I thought I did. I was left with myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, and, um, yes. That, that so I want to... That- Hmm. I want you to take that perspective about that experience now. Hmm. That was the universe hmm. telling the enemy, do what you will. She's still going to be mine. Do what you will. She's hmm. mine. Okay? Hmm. When that sto- when that's what that story is all about. The number two is patience. That's your year, 1982. That's the number 20. That's Job. Two is patience and seven is faith. Hmm. So from that story we learned through patience and faith, we can overcome any and all Hmm. obstacles. Hmm. Incidentally, Job was the richest man in town, got it bad double. Hmm. So 
I don't know if you've considered it yet, but there's a 501c3 in your future. It already is. <laughs> just awesome. this year, uh, just set that up end of last year. <laughs> So wait, wait. I, wait, forgot who I was talking I, to. I gotta, I gotta interject because I'm usually the patient one between two of us. So, are you sure patience is correct on that one? I just want no, to interject. Faith, I just want to. I'm patience with faith. Like I always have this. I don't know how to explain to you, but I, oh, I don't know if you've know, you know this about me. I always have this strong belief. Whenever we okay. talk. I talk like I know it's going to happen. Like it's, it is, I, I, like I, that's the way I am. I see the end. In fact, my frustration is that the spirit has already reached there, but my body is slow, you know? Mm. And that is why I talk so fast because I'm trying to catch up with what I've seen. It's, 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 that's just how I've always been. So slowing down is something that I'm trying to learn. <laughs> Patience is because I'm like, I've already seen it. Like, why are you why are you arguing with me? You don't need to argue with me. So my patience, I have to wait for T to get to where I've already been. I'm like, okay, I'm already there. I'll wait for you. You know, but I have this faith, like my faith is so strong. Um, that you know, it's just unwavering. It's always it's ne- you know, even when I remember I was at rock bottom, I knew that I was going to be okay. Um I didn't know how, I mean, I never, I've never questioned the almighty ever in any experience. It, it's not about why me? No, it's about what next Lord, like, you know, what, what am I supposed to do next? What's the lesson? And I started learning to ask to, to react different. What is the lesson? Because I don't want this to happen again. Um, you know, so if I, if I don't, um, forgive myself as well, um, or take responsibility, which I just learned in my late thirties. It, it's that will come. The same thing will come again in my way, but this time because I'm aware, it's faster. It goes around quicker than where it, I would linger longer. So it's just like my my awakenings have been happening a lot more close together. The more like you know uh, consistent now, as opposed to maybe once every six months or once every. Yeah, then I'm so, like, okay, so, I don't like how so dark. Dr. Craig, let me interject in real quick because when, by the time I get the vision, Dr. Craig, it, the vision was given to her. It wasn't given to me. So I need this, her to slow down and, and tell me what the vision is and yes. and how are we going to get there because no one succeeds alone. So I need to know the path to get there so that I can help implement the things to, yes. in place to help us get there so that we, we can get there. I, I'm, not, I'm not questioning her vision. I'm questioning... Ooh. Uh, I'm I'm asking how, okay, all right, what is the vision and how we're going to get there? Since you already know the path, let me know so I can put the, I can put the tools in place to get to, 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 to build the road. Yes. Her job is to paint the picture either verbally or graphically so others can see the possibilities that exist, Hmm. which means you got to slow it down. (laughs) Now, the birth date those are gifts from the creator. So that's rock solid. The letters in our name, that's our part of the contract. And we tend to, you know, dip and dab and slip and slide. But that's the intention. That's the intention. It will become easier for you to use that number two energy after you pass through the 15. You start off month, day, year, every 25 years. That's when the influence really kicks in. So after age 50, when I'm looking at you, yeah, you're not there, nowhere near that. After age 50, that 20 is going to kick in. Oh, by the way, keep your ID with you. Nobody's going to believe your age because three stands for you. That's your first name. Now, I don't Mm -hmm. want to let that information about Job slip by when I said the 501c3, that is because you're going to be able to <clears throat> receive huge contributions from corporations. Mm. And I see you having the ability to acquire huge tracts of land. All right? <laughs> to do some building, neighborhoods, feeding. That type, that's the level I'm seeing. 
See, they're going to want to be a part of what you're doing, so you're just giving them the opportunity with that 501c3. Remember, Job was the richest man in town. Hmm. And after it came back double. Hmm. So I want you to think big. That's the 27. Because the word money, M-O-N-E-Y, is a 27. <laughs> so the universe is going to entrust you. Wow. Entrust hmm. you. <sighs> so you have to be in charge. When the numbers get big, things come out of some people, horns pop out of their head. So you must maintain control hmm. because it's not going to affect you that way. No, it doesn't. Hmm. You'll be able to make sure. It's like you hear about the these hmm. nonprofit organizations and maybe 20% of the contributions make it to their their target hmm. their target area because everybody's stuff in their pocket, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well if you it might be it might be 101% because you're more likely to reach in your pocket and take out an extra dollar just, of your own. So. <laughs> we did, see, we just had this discussion about how, like, social impact has been my life. And um, I was, we were speaking to some people, like some nonprofits, about what social impact means and that they need to be transparent, that the way you spend your money needs to be shown. You have to show the pie and what's going in operations and what's going to the people that you're supposed to help. You know, and if you don't do that, you're more likely not going to get money again, you know, or more money. And this is something that I just don't understand that you're setting up something to help a particular a solve a problem and you're not actually solving it. You're you're literally getting a a, a, a payday to do nothing. So um, I understand that because that's how I did my philanthropy in the past. I was putting my own money in. I didn't know the structure of nonprofits or charity in the past. Um, but, you know, I have no regrets. <laughs> However, now I, I know there's a better way of doing this to get other people to support in a structured way. To yes. Assist. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so far we have 21, first name, which my was a three. Like, <laughs> expression. Gee, I'm like, oh my gosh, what? Oh my goodness. Every, every letter, every letter. There's information. So it's it it's a lot. Mm. It's a lot. So you got mm. 21, 27, and number three, which is expression, youth, creativity, abundance, and the number nine, selfless giving. Mm. Give, 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 helping the poor, the sick, the disadvantaged. And the nine translates into someone needs a place to go, a friend, a relative, come on to my house. They'll run up your phone bill, break up your dishes, eat your food, and leave, and don't say thank you. And that's being the hand of God on earth. (laughs) But if you can go through that and be a cheerful giver, then you'll be entrusted with more to give. So that's a lot of things sound sound better than when you're living through them. (laughs) So what's the next name? Okay, Ifedayo, and that's I for indigo, F for fish, E for elephant, D for dog, A for apple, Y for yes, O for orange. Okay, sounds it sounds musical when when you say it. Yeah, it's it's um so, love turns to happiness. <laughs> that's what it means. Wow. The other one, Ibukolu, that's wealth, like overflowing with wealth. Mm-hmm. Crown of a fool, oh. yes, <laughs> abundance wow. basically. Yeah, that just <laughs> yeah. Just, and I've been doing this a long time, crown, but that blows my mind. Wealth. Yeah, the crown creates wealth, you know. So it's uh, <laughs> some powerful names. <laughs> Akindele means the warrior has returned. <laughs> so the name that I'm looking at now. I F E D A Y O is nine fourteen twenty four twenty five and thirteen is thirty eight and three plus eight is eleven. That's wow, like yeah. solar. 
the number 11. Yay. The 38 brings great abundance. It gives the ability to um, know things are going to happen before they do. It makes you a, a it's like an, an avatar. When you go under prayer and meditation, um, it's like you can completely engross yourself in it and benefit um, deeply from it. Mm. But you have to start sharing what you're receiving. The writings aren't just for you. Oh, I love you that. You are the light. Mm. You mm. are the light. And what you're receiving is meant to be shared with others. Okay. Now, you have free will. You don't have to. But I'm I'm sharing with you I do. what Actually, your name is telling me is. Yes. I have musings and I share them. Either I post a tweet or, you know, I write something on my stories um, you know, or I share one of my, you know, close, uh, friend, my cir inner circle. Um, I learned because before I used to burn myself out thinking every idea was for me. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I am not equipped, financially equipped to do all these things. So one day someone walked into my office and they just had this massive problem. I'm like, Oh, actually two days ago, I just received X, Y, Z. Let me go get my notebook. I had written down the solution that person needed. And I just say, Hey, take and then that's when I knew, I said, oh, I'm an emissary. It's not for me. I'm an, I'm an envoy. I'm just supposed to transmit it. And this was um, exactly. actually my late, yeah, my late 20s. I knew exactly. that. Um, so I just started writing things down and I actually kept an address book, you know, almost every, I had to change it every three months because I was filling it up of ideas. And it's crazy because I used to tell my mom all the time. And then she's like, sure, that thing you wrote down like this years ago, someone has already done it. I said, oh, really? Oh, really? And I always warn people that if I share something with you, you have about six months. If you don't do anything with it, I don't know why, but it's like the universe transmits it to somebody else. Someone else is going to pick that and that that uh, information up and there's nothing you can do about it. So try and, and do something about it within six months. So that follow it anchors, through. Yes, follow through. It anchors with follow you. Through. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But, but mm -hmm. Dr. Craig, another thing that resonates with me is uh, I think towards the end of last year, I told Shola, like, one, you need to write a book on wellness, Maverick, and so forth. And then I got another vision that, like, hey, we need to co-write a book uh, on on our experiences together in social entrepreneurship. And so that's two books in, in the, the the vision I was receiving that I, I had expressed to her. So that's why this has resonated with me in a whole different way. Awesome. <laughs> Mm. Awesome. Oh, really, really and for cool. some reason, for some reason, I feel like I need I need to ask you, piano or guitar? Piano. I don't know why. Piano. My daughter okay. is the guitar. <laughs> I'm the piano. Yes. <laughs> and I used to create music. Funny enough, <laughs> just out of nowhere, I learned how to so play. So your piano, piano is in a very and she's short guitar. Time. Yeah, she's a bass guitar. And she learned, to, she picked it up in less than a, um, a month. I picked it, uh, I got to grade four in less than three months. And I could, and I played have in a concert. Have you guys ever, have you ever performed together? Not yet. So, um, hmm. She I'm just throwing to... it out there. I don't even yeah. know where it came from. Piano or guitar. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. My daughter is the, the bass guitarist. Yeah, but we, we, and we both sing. She's a way better singer than I am. Um, so singing is something that I do, like, you know, I, or music calms me. You're um, being very modest. Yeah. You're being very modest. As a number 15, you have the voice that must be heard. <laughs> it must oh be gosh. heard. Mm. You know, I, I've been mm -hmm. dancing around it. You should share. No, you, you have the voice that must be heard. That's the number 15. Dr. King stopped everything when he started talking. Mm. You have that same gift. The voice mm, that must be heard. Mm. Which so is exactly why I invited her to be on this podcast. I was like, you know what? She, I, her voice needs to be on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and T's always Definitely. trying to get me in every possible panel that you know so i can speak my like my truth and and share my knowledge um 
I didn't realize my value until, you know, a lot later in life. But now that I do, I, you know, I understand my worth. You know, I'm still learning because I, I think I'm just discovering so much of myself because I hate myself um, that I'm actually so amazed that, that I can't believe that, you know, four decades and this much. It's, it's overwhelming for me sometimes. In fact, a lot of people don't even believe, <laughs> you know, um, that um, someone young like me could have done so much. But I now, I appreciate my journey. Um, I understand why things happen the way they, they have happened in my life or why I've gone through a hurdle or a challenge or, you know, I call it a fall. Because, you know, I was meant to go through that to show someone, to others, that it could be moved, that you can, you can still live. You can still have something beyond some of the greatest mistakes ever. Um, and, and some of them may not be your fault, but a lot of them, you know, you could have managed better. It's about what you do after. Um, and that's something that I actually have to thank my job experience, <laughs> you know, for because... I thought I couldn't survive that. It was so traumatic for me. And that's when I realized that, you know, entrepreneurship is not what people think it is. It's it's a real, this is people's, this is your, this is lives. I grew up with entrepreneurship. That's how I grew up. So it's been my safety net for a long time. You know, whenever anything happened to my life, guess what? I was in, I'll start a business or, you know, I created a new revenue stream. And um, it's so, it's so nice to hear that, I am making the right decision now for my next phase. You know, I'm grateful for all the people who keep going in my ear. <laughs> See, that's really cute. <laughs> so you what's, know, your, what's your last name? Akindele. So that's A for Apple, K for King, I for Indigo, N for Nice, D for Dog, E for Elephant, L for Love, E for Elephant. Okay. That's two, three, 12, and nine is 21, 31, and three. Uh, 34. That's the number seven. Wisdom, <laughs> faith, and wisdom. Teachers and preachers in the family. That's the family name shared by everyone. So that's the number seven, okay? Uh, on the seventh day, God rested. So sevens need time by themselves to think, to analyze. And because the universe speaks in a still, quiet voice, sevens are the ones who hear it most often than anyone else. So we have three, nine, 11, and seven. Okay, three and nine is 12, 12 and 18 is 30. Okay, so your destiny, your calling is to be the voice of the creator. Mm. Three is expression and zero is the force. So the force, you promise the force, you will let it speak through you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people try to make you stop talking, <laughs> but you won't do it. And I want to encourage you not to. Keep rocking that boat. Keep expressing yourself. You have divine protection. And it's what you came. You didn't come here to say what people want to hear. Mm. You came here to give them what they need to hear. Well, well, that is so true. And, and I don't want to be the one that stop us from talking, but <laughs> we don't do a Joe yeah. Rogan type of episode. And as we as we come to the end of our episode, um, any other things that Shola should know about her number, mm -hmm. uh, her her life path number and destiny number that you want to give to her parts of what well, about to create? Another thing that people. Another thing that people find interesting and useful is to know their season. For all things, there's a season. For example, 2023, 2 plus 0 plus 23, that's this year, as up to 25. We are in a number seven year. Yes. Mm. So things are slowing down. People are turning within. The economy slowing down. Um, secrets are being revealed. People, 
or being more analytical. <clears throat> so the way you find your personal year is to add your month and day to 25. So I'm going to add 6 plus 15 to get 21. And I'm going to add that to 25, and I get 46. And that tells me this is your year. 4 plus mm. 6 is 10. It's time to begin again. After 9, the Job endings comes at 10. Time to begin again. Number one, it's your year. It's mm -hmm. okay to be selfish this year. Put your yeah. goals ahead of everything else. That's mm. what time it is. Mm. It's your season. It's mm. your season for abundance. Dr. Wow. Craig, you don't know this, but I appreciate you so much. I've been trying to say this to this woman. Uh, and I'm glad that a numerologist could come on here and, and, and back up my words. I, I had no idea you were going to say this. <laughs> and I did not pay him the to say this. timing is incredible. It took <laughs> yes. a, year, a year. It took a year. We've been wow. trying to, and the universe said it was just waiting and waiting. And we would laugh about it. Is it soup? Is it soup? He would say, yeah, it's soup. No, I thought it was soup, but wait a minute. I got some more potatoes to put in there. Let, let it simmer oh. down So <laughs> oh, This is why the universe put us, look, this is why the universe put us on pause for so long. It's like, oh, we're we, mm. we not ready. We need we need her to be at the state so she can hear the information. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right. I need, yeah, I needed to be, I wasn't ready last, this time last year, no. I, and the, the cleansing I did at the you know, when I took that break, bro, for, for one month, that was needed because I had to re reset, not just reset, but change a lot of things and decide what I wanted, what I didn't want. And when I came back, I told T, don't worry, I'm going to come back different. That don't, that, you know, and so this year that has been, you know, what has been, you know, what we've experienced together, you know, in run and how we want to run shop this year has just changed. You know, where, you know, our intention has gotten stronger, our direction, how we are going to make that impact that we are so, that our mission is, um, is so important. And then doing so with, um, not with, with, with knowing how to not make it a toxic endeavor, because that's something that I am, I'm, I don't want to do anymore. I've helped to the point where I harm myself. So I need to be able to, you know, be cautious and, and live a balanced life. That's something I want to learn now, you know, peace, calm, and balance. So those are, those are the three things that I need to harness and focus on me. And, I, and I'm, I'm so glad that you said that because I was feeling guilty last year because I knew what I had to do this year. But now that I'm hearing it again and it echoed, I'm just like, okay, I'm on the right road, you know. So, I mean, there's no turning back. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Yeah. Thank you for that question, Terrell. And there's another thing along the same lines I want to share with you. Um, make sure you have your legal team in place. Hmm. Dot your I's and cross your T's. Because I learned in physics, for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. For all the good you came here to do, there's going to be forces trying to stop you. And they're going to show up in May. And I want you to be prepared for this little situation in May. And I want you to know you've already won. Hmm. Okay. It hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen in May. Once you have your legal team together before May gets here, and I want you to know you already won. Hmm. <clears throat> it's a number 51 month coming up. I call it the Geronimo energy. Um, Me. As long as you're fighting for the right, you can't be defeated in May. Mm. But you will, you are going to um, meet some obstacles because there's energy, there's forces that love the way things are now. Mm. When you start to bring improvement and enhancing people's lives, it's going to start to influence the income of some people who are benefiting from sickness, illness, imbalance, they're profiting from what you came here to cure. And they won't be able to stop you. Mm -hmm. I didn't say they wouldn't try. 
The book says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It doesn't say there won't be any weapons formed against me. Mm. It just says they won't prosper. Mm. Because it's all about being an example and showing people forces for good win. (laughs) <laughs> mm. and that's how the universe is going to use you <laughs> that, Love it. Love Dr. It. Craig this has been amazing Thank you. another incredible one I mean you did one for my guys and it was unbelievable you did one for me it was unbelievable um, for people because I know you got the courses that we want to promote and we're going to put the <laughs> link to the courses in the um, show notes Tell people about the courses, but before actually before we get into the courses, for for those who are are who are, are still on the fence and curious, you know, how can numerology be applied to improve, applied to. you know, people's relationships or career? Well, the birth path number is often called the career number, and there's so many choices out there. But understanding your just talent, skills, and abilities, you know what to develop, what to work towards. Okay, it can help eliminate a lot of wasted time and help you focus your energy. Um, that's in terms of career, uh, but basically just in terms of self-development. This is a science that was taught in the ancient mystery schools in Egypt, where the temples said, know thyself and to thy own self be true. Western civilization attributes that to the Greeks. But if you study the Greeks, they learned it in Africa. They learned it from the Egyptians. So that's the process of numerology. Once you know yourself and you're true to that energy, it can help you make decisions, keep you on the path, because now you have that internal barometer, that internal guide, keeping you on the path. So that's how it can help. That's how it helped me. I was my own first client. <laughs> now to wrap us up and take us home, tell the people about the the courses that you have that, that could they could really benefit from and, and what to expect mm-hmm. from those courses. Well, it's interesting. I mentioned that uh, Sola can tell things are going to happen before they do. Um, and she kept talking about awakenings, awakenings. That's the name of my series. <laughs> Awakening. <laughs> yes, you've done it again. You've done it again. <laughs> this is um, a series of classes that I offer um, on an individual basis. Um, people can visit my calendar, my calendar, and book individual class sessions. They usually go about 40 minutes, I lot for an hour for questions, and there's six of them. One of them is gifts of the spirit, your special gift. That's the birth path number. Your calling, why are you here? That's the destiny number revealed by the letters in your name. <clears throat> now, we didn't do this, um, didn't have time to do this with um, Sola, but I have a class called Know Thyself where you discover your inner motivation and outer impression by learning your personality number and your heart's desire number. That comes Mm -hmm. from your vowels and your consonants. I talked a little bit about seasons. Well, in my class, we go over universal and personal energy patterns and do some planning for the year. Mm -hmm. I also do a compatibility class where you can enhance your relationships by looking at how the numbers flow together. Mm -hmm. And finally, I have my sixth class is called Pinnacles, Challenges, and Karma, How to Turn Obstacles into Stepping Stones. Mm. And I want to encourage people, if you're looking to find out more about who you are and why you're here, you can take one or all of the classes. If you book all of them, there's a discount um, if you register for all six. Yeah, and don't worry, I'm going to put the link here in the show notes so you can plug into that. I know it was life-changing for me. And shoot, I might have to go back and and sign up for a couple more classes so that I I can make sure (laughs) that I I took in all the information that I needed to take in. Um, Shola, go ahead and give any last words uh, before we close out our our session today. 
Oh man, last word. I I mean I don't even I I I'm seldom speechless, but I feel very, very satisfied. You know, with this uh, with this session today because you know, even though sometimes I've always been able to move in the direction that you know leads me to my goal, but always just hearing that I'm on the right path for the first time that's so important to me, um, especially now. You know. You, I mean, I don't want a situation where another decade passes by and then I'm asking, okay, you know, what happened? So to 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 feel that surety is really, really nice. And I'm so grateful that even though it took a year that, you you know, you stuck with us, you stuck with me <laughs> um, to get to this, this today, to get to this point today. I'm really grateful. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. And thank you to you for making sure that this happened. <laughs> <laughs> no like worries, no worries. Yes. Thank Dr. You, Craig, Jonah. we appreciate you and your guests that have been stowed on upon you Thank that you're you. sharing with the world. Um, keep on shining. Make sure y'all go out there. Get, you know, if you can't get all five, at least get one. Get yourself started. Don't wait. Don't wait. You need to start now. Get in there now. Show notes is going to be in there, links to all the courses. And I don't know what we're going to do in the future with Dr. Craig, but I'm pretty sure we're going to do something um, to help people elevate in their life and rise in their life and career by starting with your numbers and making sure that you know your gift and you're using it abundantly to fulfill the purpose of what you've been bestowed to do here in life. So thank you for tuning in to another le- episode of Rise Urban Nation. We salute you, Dr. Craig. We appreciate you. And to thank all you. those, we look forward to connecting with you in the future. And we say good night. Thank you.